and welcome back to my channel. Today I want to share with you my hair journal journey and how I went from trying to please everyone under the sun to learning to love the woman that God created me to be, you know. Um, so I hope that what I share with you can encourage someone who might be struggling with self-esteem. Uh, we know that, especially within the African-American in the Black community here in the United States, that a lot of things, especially for women, is tied to our appearance. We are unfortunately living in a culture where, you know, Sometimes we are denied jobs unless we conform our hair to a European standard or we are looked at as, you know, troublemakers or, you know, back to Africa, you know, fight the power. If we wear our hair in our natural state where people of other cultures, you know, do not have to deal with that type of pressure. And that's just real talk. So today I want to share with you, you know, how I can be so happy, nappy, okay? So I hope you enjoy this video. Okay, so my story begins many, many moons past, and coming up, I had very long hair and I mean down to the middle of my back long hair so good 24 inches easily 20 to 24 inches long um coming up you know and I did wear my hair both pressed and permed um and probably around college time I stopped perming my hair but before that you know, within my family dynamics, it was kind of always pressured that you did not look acceptable unless your hair was in a straightened form of some fashion um, through perm or through press. Okay. And it was, you were not acceptable looking, you were not beautiful looking unless you had you know straight hair and that wasn't just the family dynamic that was really kind of the cultural dynamic as well during that time i know it's a lot more acceptable now to wear natural hair but coming up that wasn't the case you know for me i was not a very girly girl i was awkward i mean with a capital a awkward if if I can put my hand on some old high school pictures and you saw them, you would see me striving to be something that I wasn't and being very unsuccessful in that attempt. Um, you know, I am not a perm girl. I am not anti-perm. I wore perms for many, many years. I am anti self-hate and I think as a culture specifically within the black community we need to understand there's a difference there's a difference between enjoying having your hair permed and perming your hair strictly because you hate the person that God has created you to be okay and growing up I feel like I was felt to feel very uncomfortable in the person that God created me to be. And I kind of just got to a place where I was just tired. I was tired of trying to please people and trying to fit into a mold that was not for me. Um, I did not wear makeup coming up. I had very heavy facial hair. I mean, I'm just keeping it real. Y'all know I'm going to do real talk. Um, not only was my behavior awkward, but between the facial hair, the crazy hairstyles that just trying to be somebody I wasn't, you know, it just was not a good mix and I wasn't happy. 
Um, you know, I dealt with anxiety issues. I dealt with depression. I dealt with self-hate, you know, and it hurt. It took me to a really bad place. And I finally just got to the point where I was like, I'm tired. I'm tired of trying to please other people and to fit into this mold. That mold was not for me, you know? And I remember the first time I cut my hair and I remember my hair was down my back. I mean, like how the girls are wearing it today, but it's bought and it's sold in. That was my natural hair, okay? And I cut it. I don't think I cut it this short, but it, it was probably close to this short. And I never felt freer in my life, you know? I felt for the first time that I was finally able to be me and it felt good and my mother said oh my gosh you cut your hair you must want to be a boy I'm like you know I'm still all woman <laughs> you know I'm a double X chromosomes okay I just my worth is just not tied into my hair that, and that's just the bottom line. Who I am as a woman is not determined by the length or the texture of my hair. And it took me years to get to that point. But when I finally got to that point, I couldn't let it go. Like that freedom just felt too good to let it go. And so I would still part my hair occasionally, maybe once a year. <laughs> when I got into the mood and I think for about the span of a good seven to ten years I would perm my hair once a year then let it grow out and go back natural and I love doing that to me it was just fun I learned to have fun with my hair where before it was a burden and our hair should not be a burden you know um so I grew my hair, I cut my hair, I perm my hair, I grow my hair, I cut it, I perm it, and that cycle just went on and on and on. And I experimented. I've had a blonde streak in the front of my hair. I've colored my hair. I've twisted my hair. I've dreaded my hair. I have had braids, cornrows. I have been completely shaved and bald by myself. <laughs> you know, I went and bought myself some clippers and shit, and I was clean shaven. My hair was much shorter than this when, you know, I met my husband. And I remember when we went on our first date, you know, I was like, oh, what type of women do you like? He was like, oh, I like girls with long, you know, flowing hair. I was like, mm hmm, that's nice. That ain't me. <laughs> 10 years of marriage is still like me. <laughs> but he knows that I am happy in who I am. And I appreciate the fact that he accepts that. You know, and even though I do wear my hair short and I wear it natural, you know, this is my everyday look, guys. But if we are going somewhere nice, if, you know, we're going out, yeah, I'm going to do, I'm going to do something more than than this, obviously. You know, um, if you watch my videos, you know that I wear wigs. I do make my own wigs. I did not start making my own wigs until a few years ago, maybe two years ago or so. Um, but I love wearing wigs mainly because I love the versatility of it. When I was in high school, I received burns to my scalp from a bad hot oil treatment at home. And 20 plus years later, I'm actually still dealing with the effects of that. So when you see my hair this short, and I tell you, yes, my hair used to be long and it used to flow down my back. A lot of that changed in high school. Um, it was a 
how those treatment gone bad. I mean, we read the directions. We knew it said, you know, don't heat the oil in the microwave. And I guess we just felt like it would be okay if we only put it in for part of the time. And unfortunately, yeah, that hot oil cooked my scalp. And I remember going to school and the whole day, I'm like, what is going on? Why am I, what's coming down my face? But I never stopped to look in the mirror to see what was going on until I got home. And I remember standing in my bathroom mirror and it finally hit me the entire day, pus had been running down my face. And that's what I was wiping off. My scalp was, it was raw. It had, in a sense that so much had been burned away. Um, it was cooked with hot oil, you know? And from that time, excuse me, from that time forward, I had not been able to pull my hair back um, into like ponytails, high ponytails, any type of ponytail. Not been able to really do cornrows, or if I did, they had to be loose and I couldn't keep them in for long periods of time. And um, I couldn't really wear headbands. I loved headbands. I couldn't really wear them much anymore, or they had to be super duper loose that I could only wear it, you know, again for short periods of time. I went from having beautiful, healthy, long flowing hair to having very bad damage to my scalp. And that ultimately, even with that damage, and then you add to that the pressure of, well, you still have to perm your hair in order to be beautiful. You still need to look good and presentable in this very European traditional mindset, even the, hello, I ain't European. Okay, I'm born in DC. Ain't nothing European about me, all right? You know, but I still had to live with that. And I finally got to the point where I was like, enough, like enough. I'm tired of the pain, of the physical pain that I'm going through, you know, trying to achieve these looks that I just can't achieve anymore because of the result of the burn. And then it's just not who I am, you know? So, you know, like I said, I, I, I cut the hair. I still enjoyed hair. I just knew that I could not live that hair journey the way that um, I had been brought up. So I started, you know, wearing wigs just for the fun of it. And I mean, one day I would wear my hair natural. The next day I would wear it slicked back. The third day I would put on a wig and day number four, I'd be back to natural. My poor coworkers wouldn't know what to expect from me, but I had fun. And what I learned was to view hair like accessories or makeup. It was it was just something to complement my mood and my outfit. And once I really adopted that mindset, a lot of the stress revolving my hair went away. And um, you know, as I got older, you know, I got I'm married, my hair was braided um, for my wedding, but it was braided in a very, um, very loose style. One of the, the young ladies that braided my hair, two of my friends braided my hair. One who braided one side, <laughs> she has the most gentle, the most tender touch. Oh my gosh. And she's actually in the like healthcare, you know, beauty care um, career field, but I could wear those braids, you know, but because her touch was so gentle, they actually started sliding out, like, on our honeymoon. It was <laughs> bad, but it looked good for the wedding, and that's what counted, but outside of that, you know, I have not been able to wear my hair braided like I used to, and I love braids. I love natural ethnic African ethnic style, whether they are African American styles or pure African styles, that is what I love. That is ultimately where what I feel most comfortable in in my hair. 
you know and again it's not to say that there's something wrong with having permed hair hello i lived half my life with permed hair um i choose not to perm it now but that's just it's a choice but it's not a choice out of all oh, you know to shame anybody you know i am pro perm if that is what you want to do i am pro weave if that is what you want to do i am pro braids pro cornrows my daughter's hair is dreaded. I'm dreading her hair, locking her hair, and I love it on her, and she's happy with it. I never thought I would have a daughter with locked hair, but, you know, it works for her, and what I've learned is you just got to find what works for you, you know, and what works for me is being me, you know? Now, I do wear wigs, and if you watch my videos, y'all know, y'all seen me in the wigs, but they're never worn out of self-hate. They're always worn out of fun and out of diversity of hairstyles, the variety, you know, and keeping that positive attitude has helped me to get to the place where I'm at now, where I am comfortable. I'm comfortable with short hair. I'm comfortable with nappy hair. I'm comfortable with my gray hair. I would not be on the internet, y'all, if I wasn't comfortable with it. But what I do want to show you is kind of how my journey has progressed in pictures, you know, and, um, and just pray for whoever is watching this is to find your peace in who you are okay you i don't care if you are vanilla chocolate toffee or anything in between god created you you are a special being you are not a standard of beauty that anybody dictates except the Lord okay he formed you in a special way if your hair is kinky coily if your hair is bone straight you need to take ownership of that and be grateful for it and you know learn to love you and that is what I have learned in this journey. I have learned to love me. And in loving me, I can accept all of this, you know? And I know that even when I have fun with my wigs, guess what? It does not change the value of who I am as a woman, as a daughter of God, okay? So that is my prayer for you, is to find your value in God and not into some rigid sense of beauty that has been placed on you. You know, um, embrace, embrace every coil, you know, maybe your hair is curly. embrace every strand of hair that is on your head, okay? So sit back and enjoy the pictures, you know, you can laugh if you want to, it's okay, I'm secure, you know, but I tell you, there is something to be said about being happy and being confident in who you are. And that is my final word to you. It's probably not my final word, because y'all know I like to talk, but that's how I'm going to end this part, okay? All right.